Satisfaction with electoral democracy is declining globally and is at a record low. In response, there's increasing interest around the world in localism and participatory democracy. The idea is to bring a wider range of knowledge, values and perspectives into decision making to empower citizens and to make public decisions more legitimate. And that, that sounds like a good thing, right? But there are also strong critiques of this trend. One of which is that participatory processes don't just give voice to communities, but actually shape them in particular ways that often reproduce existing power relations. Because of the way they're set up, you know, only certain kinds of voices or knowledge are framed as being acceptable. And this continues to exclude many issues and perspectives. So participation actually produces particular versions of citizens rather than just reflecting their views. Now in England, the flagship of this turn to participation is called neighbourhood planning, with around 2,700 communities currently involved. It basically allows community groups to write their own statutory planning policies to shape how that town or their neighbourhood will change and develop over 10 to 15 years. But this process that I just mentioned of actually shaping identities through participation is at work here, and groups doing neighbourhood planning systematically adopt identities in ways that constrain their ability to achieve what they want to do. But what's surprising is that there's not just one of these identities being produced, but three. And each of these has to be performed in order to achieve legitimacy as in a neighbourhood planning group. But then one of them, in which groups are enacted as detached and distanced from their neighbourhoods, systematically comes to dominate and that effectively excludes the kinds of knowledge, perspectives and cares that are associated with the other identities. And this then replicates a lot of the problems that neighbourhood planning was intended to solve. So, having identified some of the mechanisms through which this happens, I'm now working with NGOs to produce guidance for different stakeholders involved in neighbourhood planning to help them realign these different identities, to bring in the kind of knowledge and values and issues that are still routinely marginalised. I'm also working on extending this analysis to other sites of participatory democracy to try to better understand how we can avoid community empowerment initiatives reproducing existing power imbalances. And if that sounds interesting to you, you can find me here. Thanks very much.